The statistical physics we'll be using is taught to undergraduates. You can find the information in Wikipedia articles or a good textbook. The one that I like is Statistical Mechanics by Pathria and Beale. Statistical physics grew out of thermodynamics, which engineers used to design better steam engines and chemists used to improve reaction rates. It linked microscopic properties such as the energy of individual atoms with macroscopic properties such as temperature, volume, and pressure of gases. It has piled up so many successes that physicists have come to trust its methods. The logic of statistical physics starts from a list of every possible state of the system. This is called an ensemble. Each member of the ensemble is considered to be immersed in a huge bath and exchanges energy with the bath. If a particular member, I, of the ensemble has energy E sub I, then the fraction of the time that that member is realized is proportional to the Boltzmann weighting factor, E to the minus E sub I over KT, where K sub E is the Boltzmann constant and T is the temperature of the bath. In order to make this a probability, you need to normalize the weighting factors so that they sum to 1. This is done by dividing by a normalizing constant called the partition function, z. Its value is the sum of Boltzmann factors over all ensemble members. Thus, the task of statistical physics becomes one of enumerating the ensemble members as a function of energy. We will be using the equipartition theorem, which was developed in 1860. It applies to systems where the energy can be expressed in squares of generalized coordinates. The theorem says that the specific heat of the system is determined by the number of squared coordinates. Each term with a squared coordinate contributes one-half kT to the specific heat. The classic example is free atoms, where the Hamiltonian has three squared coordinates in the formula. One half v sub x squared for the x direction, one half v sub y squared for the y direction, and one half v sub z squared for the z direction, where m is the mass of the atom and v stands for velocity. The equipartition theorem says that the specific heat of a system composed of n such atoms will be 3 halves nkt, where k is the Boltzmann's constant and t is the temperature. A degree of freedom is any term in the Hamiltonian with a squared coordinate. There are three such squares for a monatomic gas, and the predicted specific heat is 3 halves nkt, which agrees well with the experiment. There are more degrees of freedom with diatomic molecules, such as hydrogen-2 and nitrogen-2. In addition to the three translational degrees of freedom, these molecules have two rotational degrees of freedom that contribute to their heat capacity, plus a vibrational degree of freedom along the axis separating the atoms. You would think that the heat capacity would therefore be 7 halves nkt, but experiments measure it as 6 halves nkt. This is explained by saying that the vibrational degree of freedom is frozen out at normal temperatures. The spring between the atoms is more like a rod. And that's what you need to know from statistical physics. Now we can move on to the background information for electromagnetic theory.